Hello and welcome to another scrapbooking process video. I'm Tracy, also known as Mercy Tiara, and I make scrapbooking process videos and more here on my channel. In today's video, I'm dipping back into the Adventure Awaits kit from Mercy Tiara Kits. And today I'm going to be making a six by 12 inch double-sided insert to continue a story that started on the previous 12 by 12 page, which you might have seen, it was called End of an Era. I have a few different photos here to capture the, I, I'm, I guess I'm thinking of this as our bonus night at Off Track Brewery, which is a, our favorite brewery where we've been holding our movie club and it's held a bunch of different uh, fond moments for members of our family. And um, we thought that they were closing and I scrapbooked the end of an era, my last video, which you will see linked in a card above. And at this point, I'm thinking about scrapbooking this second visit to the, to the brewery after we thought it was closing um, on a 12 by 12 sheet that would be, you know, side by side with the, here's the original one. And basically that's what we thought was our last night at the brewery, but they were going to stay open until the taps ran dry. And lo and behold, there was still more beer the next weekend, so we went back and documented it again with more pictures. And I wanted to get these photos in my album because they just told a little bit more of the story. I think it's an unfolding story that's kind of interesting because we actually went back several more times because they kept <laughs> remaining open week after week, which is really, really wonderful. We got lots of last chances to spend time there. And so I just wanted to document some of it. So as you can see, I have all of these photos. I also have these page protectors from Studio Calico. Now the holes are at a funny place in these. And if I were putting these into an album, which I don't, and I do have a video coming up about what I do with my layouts, I don't put them in an album. But if I were putting these in a regular D-ring album, I would just repunch the holes. I've done that before uh, and it works just fine. I've decided at this point that instead of scrapbooking a typical 12 by 12 layout to go as a companion page for the other one, I've decided that I'm going to make a double sided six by 12 inch insert. I just think that it's a more interesting way to scrapbook these photos. And so many, like one of them in particular is a long thin uh, photo. And so that will give me a chance to have that be emphasized on the page. As you can see, I cut down my background paper, which came in the kit, that grid paper with the sunglasses on the backside. I love that sunglasses. It hurt my heart a little bit to uh, glue this down and cover up those sunglasses, but I've got them elsewhere, so we're good. I am going to make this photo of, of Jen by the dartboard as my main photo on this page. I'm going to mat it in a beautiful dark blue cardstock from, uh, I think this is from a previous kit, not from the current kit. And that just gives it more presence on the page. It also stands up against that fairly bold grid pattern that features a very vivid dark blue as well. So that just helps that to, to stand up. I'm going to cut out some of these tickets, but not the travel themed ones. So I'm just going to selectively um, cut out the ones that don't have airplanes or obvious train. I think they're all technically travel, but some of them you have to look at closely to figure out that it's actually a train ticket or a subway ticket or something. So I'm just taking some of the more subtle ones and I want them in a variety of different colors. So I grabbed an orange one, I grabbed a pink one, and now I'm grabbing this blue one. That's what I'm going to start with here. And they have a little bit of a torn edge, so I am going to go back in and cut them in even more detail. So let me just trim off the edge of this, just trim it down a little bit more, and then I'll use my smaller scissors to cut back and forth and back and forth to just mimic the jaggedy edge that a torn ticket would have. Now I did that with all of them, but I didn't make you watch that whole process because it's not the most interesting part of this page. So I just forwarded a little bit in the video and now I have these three tickets. They make a really great embellishment for this page. 
and I was just testing to make sure that this layout would actually fit in a six by 12 inch sleeve. I doubted it for some reason. I had a feeling I had cut it a little bit wider than six inches and I had, so I'm glad I checked it. Now I have these letter, it's a set of dies and stamps that go together. They are from Waffle Flower. I'm going to be using the dies here and I really, there's something that I really love about the layout before this one, the end of an era one. So I'm just going to pop it up in the top corner there for you to keep an eye on as I design this layout. And what I love about it is that diagonal colorful paper that's around the outside edge of that layout. And so I definitely want to bring that patterned paper into this layout, which will be right beside it. This is the front side of this double-sided six by 12 inch insert. So I am going to call this layout one more time and it's going to be a very large title as you can see. So I am using more of that same navy blue cardstock from a previous kit and you'll see how these letter dies work in that they cut at the same time they cut a chunky letter but they also cut a very thin border for that letter and so I am running this through with the navy blue cardstock to get the little outside edge and then I'm going to run it through again with the patterned paper to get the chunky main part of the letter. And as you can see, I've decided that it's easier for me to use these letters if I just washi tape them all together. It just allows them to stay in place. I didn't want them to shift as they went through with this diagonal paper because I want the diagonal stripes to be all exactly the same way. So that helps me to keep those letters straight. I did have to die cut multiples of some of the letters in order to spell out one more time. There's three E's for example, and uh, I think that there's two O's. And so I'm cutting out some of this, but I wanted you to see some of the process just so you get a sense of the cutting process there. And I wasn't entirely sure if I would want to do it this way in that, you know, with the, with the dark blue outlines and the patterned main part or the opposite, but I definitely, definitely like it this way. So I just did a little trial letter there and it just, you can't see those outlines at all when you do it that way. So I'm going to do it this way with the, with the solid colored outlines and the, the patterned paper, chunky parts of the letter. So this is how it's going to look. And of course, without those outlines, see how bad this looks. It really doesn't look that great at all. But as soon as you start layering the outlines on to these letters, they start to pop up off the page and it's almost like magic. I just love how this page comes together. The process of making this was incredibly fun and rewarding. So using something like this, a supply like this, like these double dies is a little bit fussier, a little bit more time consuming, but so, so worth it because look at how beautiful these, these letters look as they come together. I think I'm going to have to recut that M, but that's okay. No, nope, I'm just going to trim it up with my scissors after all, and that will be, that will be fine. Don't forget to use the insides of your O's and the little bit in the inside of the R and that sort of thing when you're making these, these letters. It looks like I did recut the M, so bear with me. I'm just going to cut that part out and we will rendezvous on the other side of this process. So now that I have all of the letters figured out and cut out properly, I need to glue them all down. So this is my technique. I glue the letter down, the letter itself, and so that I don't get glue everywhere, I'm going to use these little inexpensive four by six inch index cards from Amazon. And I'm just going to use my Zig two-way glue pen. I have the chisel tip for this. And I find that that is probably my best bet for adhering these down. When I put the M, it, I'm putting it a little bit, not, not butt up against the E because I do want to have enough room for that little outline piece to fit. 
So here I'm trying it the other way, which is to put the outline first and then place the letter inside. And it looks like that actually works a little bit better because that's what I'm going with here. So we will put down the outline for the T and then we'll put the little T in. I'm using two different kinds of glue here because my glue pen is really great for something as tiny as these little outline pieces. But my Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue is better for uh, something bigger, like a larger surface, like these letters. So you get the gist of this now. It does take a fair amount of time to die cut all these letters, lay them all out, get them all trimmed up and looking good, and then glue them down. But the title work is so bold on this layout, it just looks amazing. So I think it's totally worthwhile. But what do you think? Leave me a comment below. I'd like to hear. So I got to the point where the E in one was laid down and glued in place, but I wasn't sure how the O and the N would layer with the photo. So, oh, it's actually not glued in place yet. So I am for the entire word of, for the entirety of the word one, <laughs> I am going to, uh, Kind of put the put the photo down once I have a sense of where the the letters are going to line up, and then of course the E is is over to the right. It's all right justified, so that's an easy placement. And then because I had already placed the photo in place, this N is going to overlap a tiny little smidgen with the edge of the photo, but that's okay because I already figured that out and placed the photo down. So I just showed this part in more detail because it's. It's, a, it's where it's a little bit different. And that's what these process videos are all about. It's about showing my process. I don't usually cut parts out, but where this video included so much die cutting and so much gluing things down, I just decided to rush it a, along a little bit. I know some of you love to see the full long process videos um, and some of you don't. So uh, this one is a little bit edited. Now I'm going to place these tickets right here. I think they work really well there. It covers up some of the space that's kind of like dead space in the photo right beside her legs. And you can still, I like that you can still see what shoes she was wearing. She was very proud of herself. She just kind of picked up some darts and threw them. It was like, she's not a dart player, but she did really well. And like, I think she got a bullseye or almost like very, very close to the center. So I was super impressed. So that's why I asked to take her picture. It was April 5th, 2024. And now that side of this page is done. So let's move on and do the second half. Of this little insert. Now the second half is not going to be on this paper but basically this paper which is the back side of the other page is going to hold the space for me so that I know how I might want to layer and combine these elements. I have a beer bottle that was a leftover stamped piece from a Tim Holtz stamp set from the uh, from the end of an era layout You'll notice that that layout has a stamped beer mug and I also at the same time stamped a bottle from the same stamp set and just left it on my desk and here it is. It looks like it's gonna make its way onto this page. Now I also have a Facebook post from the company itself announcing that it would be closing and having the little Volkswagen bus uh, going down the lane leaving and it's a very kind of quaint little post and image. So I wanted to include that. I am going to paint to color in not paint, pardon me, I'm going to color in this beer bottle using some browns. I have my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers here and I just picked out a brown that I thought looked kind of beer like in its shade. And <laughs> luckily beer comes in a lot of different shades. So I was able to just pick one and go with it. And uh, as you can see, this is really quick coloring. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to shade it or anything, especially with this stamp set that already has some shading in the form of hash marks on the stamp itself. I'm going to make my label be this beautiful, rich green color for a, a local brand of beer that is actually not from this brewery, but I make almost all my beer bottles look like this with the green label. And I like how it looks with this kind of sketchy, unfinished look. It's not, it doesn't look perfect. It's no, you know, fancy Copic shading or anything like that. It's just a colored in beer bottle. And that's exactly what I wanted it to be. 
I am going to cut this out and I'm going to cut it out so that I am discluding all of those little marks along the edges of the of the beer bottle, like with the measurements and that sort of thing. The, the thing that makes it look like a blueprint, I'm going to cut all of that part off. I'm going to layer it with that uh, Facebook post, which is very vertical as well. So we've got two very vertical elements here, and then we also have the horizontal photo as well. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to combine these two vertical elements and one horizontal, but let's start by just cutting out the beer bottle so that I can percolate on the idea of how I might want to combine those two. I'm thinking I, those three actually, what I'm thinking is that the beer bottle will probably layer nicely, either tucked behind or in front of the Facebook post. And then the horizontal photo can go below. I'm pulling over some of my scraps because I do want to incorporate some of the same patterns from the flip side and also from the larger layout that goes along with this with this add on. So we have this stripey paper, which I adore so much, and I'm trying to save every last little bit of it because I love it. It's so bright and energetic. These layer quite nicely together up there and then I was thinking I could put some labels or die cuts or something between the two and basically have these two clusters here. It will flip like this so that those other two will be facing each other but when you're looking at this half you will also see the left side of the end of an era layout at the same time. I've decided I will use the other half of this grid paper that I had used as the background on the other one. And I have to decide, am I going to do the exact same thing, which is mat it with that yellow paper or some type of paper, or am I just going to leave it plain? I've decided to just leave it plain. I like it just as a different look. You're not going to see the two of them at the same time anyway, so they don't really have to match. And even if you did, they still don't have to match. I just like it this way, so I'll do it this way. I have, I'm trying to find enough of, <laughs> of this blue paper to be able to mat both the Facebook post and the photo with it. And it's coming down to the very last little scraps here. So matting this photo is relatively easy because I was able to find a spot where it fit. But with this Facebook post, it's a little bit trickier. I had to squeeze it in between these letter die cut pieces and we'll just see if we can get enough of it. I could have pieced two pieces together as well but luckily I didn't even have to do that so we will I haven't decided yet if I'm tucking or layering the beer bottle over top of and let's also get just a little bit of this stripey paper on here too not a whole lot but just enough to continue on from the page before it. This paper had been hand cut, so it is a little bit wonky in its edges. So I just straightened up the edges first with my trimmer and then I will cut it in half or approximately half and I'll have one little piece running along. They're both going to be horizontal. One piece will run along the bottom by the bottom photo and one piece will run along the top. And those will give me my two anchors for the clusters that will end up being around these elements. Anchoring with a horizontal strip, or what I call the ledge technique, is one of my favorite ways for making something feel like it belongs on a page. And when I've got these two disparate clusters that are not going to be touching, I, I want to have them be anchored. I certainly don't want to look want it to look like this beer bottle is floating up in the sky or anything like that. So I'm anchoring it with this with this piece of pattern paper. It serves two purposes, which is to continue that pattern onto the second page, but it also, as I said, helps to anchor everything on the page quite nicely. So I like that. This foam tape is my favorite. It's the Scotch brand and it's terrible. Not terrible, it's tear-able. So you can tear it. <laughs> I just realized what that sounded like. So. It's not terrible. It is actually wonderful. And I love that you can tear it by hand without needing to use your scissors. So that's a great reason to get that particular brand of 
foam tape. Not every foam tape you can tear by hand. Some of them you can and some of them you can't. Some you need to use scissors for. And I love not needing to pick up another tool in the middle of my process. As you can see, I'm just scooching that over. At first I had it so that it was, it was falling off the edge of the page, but now I have just a little smidgen of that stripey paper showing over on the right hand side between the edge of the photo and the edge of the page. I really like that. Let's continue on with another little ticket shape. So I grabbed another one of the more neutral looking ones and oops, let's, let's actually grab two of them. Or maybe even three. I think I'm going to only put two of them on the page, but I grabbed three. I'm going to cut these out the same way that I cut out the other ones, which is, you know, using my little precision scissors. Having a small set of scissors makes this kind of fussy cutting with little nooks and crannies a little bit easier. So it is worth having a second pair. When I was a beginner scrapbooker, I remember hesitating to buy a separate pair of scissors just for fussy cutting. I felt like uh, I can I can cut fine with my big scissors. Do I really need those? And you know, when you're just starting to get supplies, it's hard to justify what you want to spend money on and what you want to save up for and that sort of thing. But I remember as soon as I bought these Cutter B scissors, feeling so glad that I did so because they make such a big difference with the fussy cutting and made me a lot more likely to want to actually do it, which, you know, that matters. I'm cutting out the third one, even though I'm not sure that I'm going to use it. Oh, look at that. I did end up using it. At first glance, it looked like I didn't, but I did. It's tucked in underneath of the of the orange one. So there you go. I did use them all after all. What do I know? I'm just the narrator. So I have these tickets and I'm trying to decide where these three tickets will go on this layout. And as I'm trying to decide, I'm thinking about, I had an idea, which is to use these brads that came in the embellishment kit to make it look like those three on the other side are held together with a brad. I think that's just the perfect extra embellishment. There's not much embellishment on that page, so that works really well. I'll put the orange and pink tag or tickets stuck underneath of the beer bottle, and then I will put the turquoise or blue one somewhere by the horizontal photo. Now let's turn our attention to embellishments. We have more labels that we could use here. And I'm going to cut these up. These are labels that come in the cut apart printable file that comes with the main kit from Mercy Tiara Kits. I have a number, these are designed to coordinate perfectly with the kit and I have a number of different options here in terms of sizes. So I have a full sheet of the full size one. It comes in two sheets. So one is full size labels and the other one is half size labels or partial smaller size labels. So I'm going to cut these up, which is pretty easy because they're, you know, most of them are straight lines. And then there's just a little curvy little edge that you have to cut in each of the corners as well. So that gives me two fairly large spots for journaling. It picks up on the label that is on the, the coordinating page that goes with this insert. There's a label on that. It's a different brand. It's not, it's from one of the die cut sets. It's not from the cut aparts, but still it continues that label. And I'm just going to cut a whole bunch of these because I'm not sure which ones I might use or how many of them I might use. As you can see, you can cut fussy cut with the larger scissors. It's just a little bit harder and I'm not sure why I'm doing it here because my little scissors are literally right there. But for whatever reason, I'm deciding to cut with the big ones. So there we go. Now, as you can see, of course, this is four times the speed, but it really didn't take all that long to cut those out. That's what I love about cut apart labels. They're just so easy to cut out and they're fairly fast. And it's going to take me a little bit of time to figure out exactly how I want to layer these together. I know I have a few chunks of things to say, like a couple of different ideas. And so because there are a couple of different ideas, I can spread them across different, uh, different labels. 
So I'm liking that. I grabbed my adhesive so that I can start gluing them down. I've started by gluing these two to one another and then I'll glue them to the page. And I'll put this one here so it overlaps with both the ticket and with the photo. And then this one can float down. Meaning when I say float, I just mean it's not attached to anything. It's just kind of floating on the background paper. I like it like that. And now I will staple these two tickets together. And then the other ticket that's by itself is going to get the same treatment as the ticket on the flip side, which is a brad to look like it's held in place with a brad. My journaling here says, although... Although we thought last week was our last movie club meeting at Off Track, it turns out they still had beer this weekend, so we're still open. We talked Sopranos, third places, education, LGBTQ plus issues, and sipped some brew. Nothing like one last chance to hang out in our favorite third place. Jen threw some darts and women's basketball was on the big screen. So I just wanted to include a couple of details about the night just so that I don't forget it. Those were kind of prominent things that happened that evening. I will also outline all of this journaling. I just feel like it looks like it belongs when I outline it. So I'm just rereading and checking to see if I captured all of my ideas and I didn't. So I had a, a few more to add there. I am doing my journaling with a Sharpie marker. No, not a Sharpie marker, actually. It's a Sharpie pen, which I like to point out is completely different than a Sharpie marker. So don't get the two of them mixed up. A Sharpie pen is a felt tip pen that writes like a marker, uh, and it kind of is a marker, but Sharpie markers are permanent pens and they will bleed quite a bit on regular paper. You really need to use Sharpie markers on a slick surface and Sharpie pens are great for, for writing on paper. So I keep both in my scrap room. Sharpie is a great brand and I love their markers for permanent or for writing on anything plasticky or shiny, but this Sharpie pen is one of my favorite black journaling pens, so I use it all the time. Now, up here in the corner, I have a little bit of space that I want to use for uh, another title. And I'm using these tiny little, they look like subway circles to me, and they're part of the Coast to Coast collection from American Crafts, so they're probably designed to look like subway stickers, like subway letters. And I am writing out, till the taps run dry, and I just want to mix up the letters so that I don't have two colors next to each other or too close to one another as I do that. Now I will scooch them all over a little bit. I scooched them over a couple of times. I did cut some of that out of this video because it's just basically what you see me doing there. I scooched them over and they weren't quite right. So I scooched them over a little bit more. I wanted them to be all justified over to the right hand side and they weren't always lining up that way. And also with circular letters, it's easy for them to be just slightly tilted. And so I just wanted to fix them all up and make sure they were all straight up and down so that they didn't look a little wonky. So here is how this page looks, this little insert. It will go in a six by 12 inch page protector, which I showed at the beginning of this. And uh, it will be right after this layout right here with the uh, end of an era. So this page was really fun to make. I love this idea of cutting a page in half and turning it into a double-sided insert instead of as a 12 by 12. I think that this design would have looked great spread exactly as it is across a 12 by 12 inch page, but I like it like this with a little flip. So before I share the photos, or maybe as I share the photos, I'll give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who were on the screen just a second ago. Those folks help make this channel happen, so big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and real-time unedited versions of my videos, as well as a monthly, well, lately it's been weekly, live stream. So lots and lots of live streams over there on Patreon if you like those head on over, or you can watch them as an archived video, which ends up just being a real-time video. So 
thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope that you enjoyed this page. Stay tuned for my channel for more process videos. And until next time, take care and have a really great scrappy week.